So I know that the time between my uploads are bigger than the gaps between a redneck's teeth, but I'm happy to say I finally managed to break free from my temporary crippling path of exile addiction long enough to make another video for you guys. I may not have been able to beat the base game without taking damage, so let's give it a try for the DLCs shall we? First up, Hearts of Stone. The rules are once again very simple, if I get hit, I reload my save file, and as per tradition, this run will take place on Death March. Loading into the game, the first thing we had to do was allocate our skill points. I decided it was a good idea to go for a full brain rot brute force build this time round, specking exclusively into melee damage. Enthusiastic to get started, I eagerly made my way to meet up with Olgeard, since he posted a contract and as a witcher, I wasn't going to refuse. He eventually, after some long-winded dialogue, shared the details to hunt the beast he was after, and I was on my way to the sewers, just to quickly have to reset from the first drowner I encountered. Moving on, I made my way further into the sewer and bumped into our good friend Shani, rudely interrupting her performing CPR on a long since dead person, which, for a medic, I'm surprised she didn't notice this sooner. Following the trail of dead people led us to a hole in the sewer, which didn't quite go to plan. The Witcher 3 turned from an RPG into a hard survival game which wasn't exactly compatible with a no hit run. I took so many resets here, the drowners never failed to swarm and overpower me despite using everything I had at my disposal. Reset after reset came, and some time later, the drowners went from grouping up to attacking one at a time making this section so much easier. The slime on the walls was getting thicker and for some reason Shani wanted a sample of the dirty bitch. Jumping into the monster's lair, I prepared some bait and waited for the oversized toad to come out and play. My first few attempts at this boss ended up mostly being learning his attacks and trying different strats. It turned out to be fairly difficult to avoid some of the damage in this fight. As it turns out, green lingering damage ground effects don't exactly go well with a green background. Although it took upwards of 30 attempts, once I figured out the fight and to use northern wind bombs and Yerden, it became quite easy just to smash my face against him until he died. As part of a slight oversight, Geralt ended up getting covered in slime and quickly passed out. Unfortunately for us, the toad happened to be a prince, which means I was royally fucked. Upon waking up from our slumber, I had a little chat with my cellmate before completely butchering the native language of our captors, and since that is an unforgivable sin, we were to be executed. Luckily for me though, Gontra Adim coincidentally was watching over me and offered to save me in exchange for returning the favour. The cutscene ended, Gontra Adim took his leave and the boat shipwrecked from a storm. Apparently being on a boat for however long I was on it, turned Geralt into the most Irish person on the planet with skin pale enough to burn the eyes of anybody looking his way. Using a rock and some cool sword tricks, we escaped our binds and preferred to fight the Afiri warriors. By running away like a little bitch. Once I got far enough away, I re-equipped my gear and made my way to the meeting spot for the Master Mirror to repay our debt to him. He asked us to fulfil three wishes for Olgeard, not exactly something I was too thrilled about since he did just nearly get us killed, but I didn't really have a choice thanks to the cool tattoo he gave me. With our conversation over, I wasted no time making my way back to the estate, which just like my hopes and dreams, was up in flames. It did give me some excellent lighting for the beheading taking place outside though, so I can't complain too much. Angry, the wife of the man that just died tried to get revenge in record time, but unfortunately for her, Olgeard is immortal. Not wanting to get involved in people's personal drama, I received two of his three wishes. Firstly, I had to give his brother the time of his life, which initially I thought would be difficult since I'm neither a stripper or a prostitute, but thankfully, that's not what he had in mind. All we had to do was party and have a good time, but there was a catch. His brother had been dead for a while, and I didn't know where the body was. In an attempt to get that information, I met up with the medic from the hit game Team Fortress 2, who just so happened to have a book showing where the brother was buried. Finding the crypt was easy, and arguably the most romantic place to possibly invite somebody to a wedding, but that had to wait. Before we could do that we had to do some ghost busting and desecrate the dead, which didn't pose much of a challenge. We found the ghost of Olgeard's brother and became possessed, meaning there was no better time to attend a wedding. Not much happened here, we stole some clothes, vandalised some property and dropped some sick moves, but with that, the wedding was quickly over. Returning to Olgeard, we handed him a letter from his brother, which meant we could move on to his second wish, bringing him the house of Maximilian Bosodi. 
not an easy task, since after we made our way inside the auction house, bought every item and brought it up to the owner, we were immediately kicked out and attacked. The guards were an easy fight, especially since one of them started fighting his sleep paralysis demon during the encounter, instead of throwing hands with me. After giving them a good pounding, a shady guy dressed in all black approached us about obtaining the house, and we had to meet him in the basement of a random hut. Before we could do that though, we had to of course wear our cool new glasses. I talked to the stranger, and he let us in on the grand heist he had been planning, and it was up to me to find some more people to help him. So we went on our merry way, bribed a guard to free a safecracker, and made our way to the roadshow where I nearly let the intrusive thoughts win and shot the elf instead, but I managed to push through and just shoot the apples. With our dream team assembled, all that remained was to poison the guards, which seemed to be done by serving them the equivalent of gas station sushi. Now that each piece was in place, we waited until night and climbed the tower to enter the auction house. Unfortunately, our smooth heist ran into some issues. The place was occupied, and violence was the only answer. Using our wooden sword, the guards didn't stand a chance, and we took a hostage to buy some time for our safecracker to do his thing, and also just because it's fun. Getting through the door led to us falling into a pit of spiders that couldn't help but blow their white sticky load all over us before pouncing onto me. I reset a few times and found an extraordinary level of cheese I didn't think possible. Running to trigger the trap, and then jumping back to the door, lets you stand on the ledge, and you can just kill the spiders with your crossbow. This took a while, but was 100% worth it. Ten minutes later, I climbed back up to my team and made it to the final room of the vault. It was revealed that the sketchy stranger was in fact a member of the Bossodi family. The guards and Horst were no match for us, and swiftly fell. Things got a bit tense after Horst received dental surgery against his will, since our partner in crime didn't want to give us the small golden house. As a man of peace though, it proved to be easy to convince him to hand it over. And with that, we completed the second wish, all while being hit less than the G-spot of any of the women I've dated. We returned the house to Olgierd, and could finally begin working on his third wish, which in this run was about the bulk of the struggle. I was tasked with collecting the rose he gave to his former wife, which to obtain required us to play through the entirety of Luigi's Mansion 3 for the Nintendo Switch. I made my way to the Von Everick Manor, scared a thief away, and began to explore for a violet rose. I didn't find it initially, but I did stumble across the thing that killed the thief's friend. The caretaker turned out to be easy to take care of, just being a bit tedious having to kill the souls. Looting the body gave us a key to the house which was quite handy. Entering the building caused lots of spooky things to happen, like this riff coming out of a painting and this chandelier dropping from the ceiling. Going deeper into the mansion, I had the displeasure of having to fight the wraith from moments earlier. In theory, this fight is perfect, but on Deathmatch, this fight is a nightmare especially trying to do it hitless. I might be missing something, but the fact that she becomes untargetable and starts to heal from a nearby painting so frequently makes this ridiculous to do hitless. You have to hit the paintings to stop her from healing, but then what seems like two seconds later, she does it again, and again, and again. The only option I had was just to brute force it with melee attacks between phases and just hope it was enough. This ended up working out for me and I was able to move on to Iris' bedroom where we found her dead decaying body laid on the bed. Me, the cat and the dog buried Iris next to where she used to paint, and we could get closer to finding the rose. Iris arose from the dead and led us into the painting world where I had to restore her memories. The first memory turned out to be the hardest of the lot surprisingly. Handing the glass to Olgi had spawned some spectres that on top of there being a lot of them, happened to be slightly transparent and black making it extremely difficult to see what the hell was even going on. I had to reset over 20 times for this, but finally with a mix of running in circles, accidentally splitting them up and our instant kill skill, I managed to take them down. Working our way through the Paint World Mansion, I restored some more memories, one of which being a ritual that led to a fire. To escape the fire, I fled into a painting on the wall, which seemed to be a bit colder and- Oh, come on, really? Again? Unfortunately for me, the only way to progress is through this painting, and even more unfortunately, there is absolutely no way to avoid taking damage here. In fact, the damage is so unavoidable, I took damage before I even regained control of Geralt after the cutscene. Regardless of the sadness it brings me to fill another challenge to being slightly cold, I pressed forward and restored more memories. I spoke to Iris and all we had left to do was confront her greatest fear, reading a letter from Olgir to herself. 
This led us to a really fun fight that is probably the most enjoyable part of the game to do Hitless. We had to fight visions of Algeard, each one being progressively harder than the previous. Starting out, I tried playing a bit cautiously, mostly focusing on dodging and landing the occasional strike, but this actually caused me more harm than good. Instead, I took a page from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia and just started blasting, which to my surprise actually worked. With Iris's nightmares put to rest, we had a heart-to-heart -heart talk before taking the rose from her so her torment could come to an end. In parting, the dog that had been following us around gave us one last bit of advice, to beware of the Man of Glass. Now that we had fulfilled the third and final wish, I could return to Olgeard's man at the inn to turn it in. This man happened to be gone through a dim, where he revealed he could pause time. After a brief conversation, putting a fly in somebody's soup and pushing a wooden spoon straight through a random person's eye, he unpaused time and I could go meet up with Olgeard at the Temple of Lilvani. Arriving at the temple, he seemed rather sceptical about the location, wondering why we had to meet up here of all places. I handed him the rose from the day he last saw his wife, but just as I did that though, Odim came down from the sky in the most dramatic over-the-top way possible, walking on the sky towards us. He had come to claim Olgeard's soul now that his pact had been complete. The full contract is revealed to be three wishes had to be fulfilled, and that they must stand together on the moon but thanks to technicalities, the temple had an image of the moon on the floor. So with that, the contract was complete. We watched Olgia turn to dust, our cool tattoo got removed, and I got to choose a reward for helping. I, of course, being the fat bastard that I am, chose unlimited food, and with that, I did not beat the Witcher 3 Hearts of Stone without taking any damage. Thanks for watching. Be sure to do the YouTube things, like, subscribe, all that jazz. Check out the links in the description below and join me next time where I take on blood and wine without taking any damage. Surely there won't be any snow in that DLC, right?